Okay. Let's get started. All right. We talked about blackmail and basically um, the things that they, the strikes that start coming on them from birth. So the mother choosing the wrong guy, um, the father, you know, leaving and abandoning the black male child, uh, getting in school and um, getting in trouble, uh, middle school making decisions that are not so good, high school um, getting into girls and making mistakes there, you know, coming up with a baby, pressure coming up on him, and him deciding, you know, what to do in order to feed this child, or um, sitting back and, and letting the government take care of him, his child, and uh, his, his girlfriend. We talked about black women and the same thing. Um, mothers picking the wrong, wrong father, wrong, the wrong male, um, the black men leaving out of their children, their female daughters' lives, um, female daughters, you know, heading to school with this, this uh, void, this need, getting into middle school, making choices that are not that good, and of course, high school where they get into boys and um, are either looking for that love they didn't get from their father or looking for the opposite of what their mother said their father was. Perhaps getting pregnant and then of course dropping out of school and being in the same position that their mother is in, raising children alone as a single parent. And now you have a lot of um, white organizations that have manipulated black women into remaining under white domination by embracing the idea of being a single mother, which is not something that the creator planned for black women. And you see these same white women are out there, and they got the, the husband and the 2.3 children and the, a dog and a cat in a white picket fence, but they're telling black women, you know, be proud to be a single mother. So we get to the result of that black man and that black woman making bad choices, and we have black children. And black children have a lot of different uh, uh, pressures on them, and a lot of times adults say, well, you have no bills, so how can you possibly have pressure? And many adults forget how hard it was getting to school, whether you have, you know, you don't feel physically attractive or, or you something, you know, you may wear glasses or whatever the situation. Um, getting to school has become less about education more about acceptance, and that's one of the main things that we have to uh, address and, and correct and get school back about education. Now, parents have a lot of responsibility in the way that these, these schools have gone. They knew that white people did not like them and did not like their children, yet they put their children in this position of having to go and integrate into white schools, which created two problems. And that each child is going to go through one of those two problems. Either the child is going to rebel against that and get into trouble a lot, or the child is going to give up everything black and assimilate themselves into trying to be like white children in order to be accepted. And so we see those two things on a regular basis. So now you got, um, you know, these black schools that everybody has told black children that, you know, several, from civil rights people to politicians to police officers to whoever, that black schools are inferior and white schools are superior. And you may, have, may not have used those words exactly, but that's the basic of it. If you want a better education, you go to a white school. If you are not in a position to go to a white school, then you're going to get an inferior education and you're poor, so that means that, you know, 
you're not up to par because if you were not poor, then uh, you would be able to afford to go to a private school or whatnot. So, you know, you just hit them with all of this different pressure. So now you, know, you have these children that are in the black school. Um, they're not having the support at home, many of them. Um, now, I tell people they blame parents a lot for uh, the things that are happening to the children that you see on the street. And while parents have a huge chunk of the responsibility, there is one aspect over the past 29 years, especially the past 25 years, that has contributed to more of the gang activity, more of the, the violent behavior, more of the dysfunctional behavior of black children than any other uh, um, factor. Now, of course, the second uh, greatest factor in the gang activity is, of course, white police officers. They literally, uh, many of them promote gang activity in order to increase their, their job security and in order to um, basically make money off of the, the um, picking up of the children to show that these black children are just, you know, if it wasn't for police officers, what would the world be like, you know? And so you had states making money, cities making money, towns making money, um, and they all milk the taxpayers because of this um, huge problem. So that's just the second largest factor. When it comes to the first, the number one factor in the lives that create the situations you see of children on the corner and fighting and acting bad in school and all this different stuff, the de facts child slave trade is the number one predator that we fight in when it comes to black children. You have a system, which is the same system, that was in place when whites took a child from a slave mother and these whites would put this child in a holding uh, facility while that child was waiting to be sold. It's the same system. But what you have is a system that in today's standards will take a child from their home because a mother goes to work and leaves a 12-year-old, a 9-year-old, um, and a 6-year-old at home with the door locked, food in the, in the cabinet, food in the refrigerator, um, TV, whatever, till she gets home. Okay? They may have been doing this for years. And, you know, the 12-year-old you know, takes care of got emergency numbers, you know, grandma number, all this stuff. And black folks have been doing this for years. They, they have their older children help them with the younger children. And while most people see it because they've been conditioned to see it as a bad thing to leave a 12-year-old, a 9-year-old, and a 6-year-old, when black folks were in country settings, when they were in, before they were, became what black people call city pads, you, it was nothing for a 12-year-old to take care of its siblings. Um, it was nothing for a, a mother and father and older siblings to be out in the fields and working and, and um, running the farm or running the, the family business or the family store or whatever it is or even going to work. And this 12-year-old is taking care of its siblings. So now we get up where we're black folks that are trying to be like white folks and all city side, and we think it is such a horrible thing to have a 12-year-old um, in charge of taking care of their siblings while their parent is at work. Now, the ideal, of course, would be for that father to still be in the picture, him be out working, that mother be at home and taking care of the children. That's the ideal. But, a mother trying to get out there and make 
provide a home for her children. Leaves the 12-year-old and the 9-year-old and 6-year-old at home with all the stuff they need until she gets home, as well as a way to call people. Now, defect, uh, they said neighbor calls because this one children go outside or whatever. Defect comes and takes the children out of the security of the home, out of the place where they got food and all that good stuff because they considered this mother to be a bad parent for leaving these children. 